Greenwood City Councilwoman Edith Childs chanted the words, fired up, ready to go in 2008 when she supported Barack Obama for president. Now she's supporting Tom Steyer for president. I sit down exclusively with Edith for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Miss Edith Childs. Yes. Welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, everyone knows you from 12 years ago when you basically helped President Obama's campaign with the fight up ready to go. Yes. What is the biggest difference between 12 years ago and right now? Who is Edith Childs? Um, Edith Childs is council, uh, councilwoman, Greenwood, South Carolina, yes. representing District 1. Right. Uh, she's just a well-rounded person who loves people. Yes. And enjoy everything she does. That's right. That's yeah. right. I know that President Obama said a couple of years ago that the importance of one voice how important is your one voice now? It's just as important now as it was 12 years ago. Mm. Wow. I believe it is. Okay. Right. And I know that obviously you said this recently that in the Tom Stein campaign, this quote, once you hear it, you'll never forget. Fired up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Why haven't people forgotten about you? Well, because they realize what that fired up meant to President Obama okay. and that it got him elected. So they say, so they say, I don't know that. I'm just going by what they say. But if that's what they say, then I'll have to be what they say because he was elected. Mm. And even though Mitch McConnell said he's going to be a one-time president, a one-term president, it proved him wrong. He was a two-term president. Would have been a three-term president, but it didn't work out that way. But he served his two terms. Okay, and I know that obviously when he uh, President Obama reached uh, talked about you, he says one voice can change a room, and if a voice can change a room, it can, can change a city, and if it can change a city, it can change a state. How have you been able to change South Carolina in your leadership role over the past couple of years? Well, um. Depending on where you are in South Carolina, because everybody still doesn't know Edith Child. They might know the fight up, they still don't know Edith Child the person. Uh, she has helped many people continue to do the back to school bash that uh, served over 2,000 plus children as of today. Continue to do the food drive oh, yeah. that benefits the soup kitchen. Uh, the food bank and the United Ministry that serve thousands of people every year, most of the time every month, thousands of people, and then continue to um, make those things for others to do. Because there's some of us that have much, and if you have much, then you need to give much and those that have little and just give what they can. Give what they can. You know, so, and I don't mind doing that. Yeah. I just do what I do. do yes, ma'am. Let me get back to the campaign, because the Greenwood Index Journal reports this. Obviously, Greenwood County Councilwoman Edith Child's natural inclination was to support fellow Democrat Joe Biden for president. After all, his endorsement of then-candidate Barack Obama in 2018, 2008, that is, became national news. But you told the Washington Times last year that you were surprised that Biden didn't call you. Where are you emotionally with that? I'm fine with that. That was his decision. Mm -hmm. So because he didn't call, then he's lost out to someone else. Because I felt that um, even with him being in the position he's in, he did not implement some of the things that President Obama had already done. And if you can't implement what your president did, that doesn't leave you in a good standing out with me. Mm -hmm. There should have been something you could say, okay, we did this and this is what we're going to do. We're going to correct it and we're going to make it better. But no, it wasn't any of that. So if you can't do that, something is not right 
And I know after uh, Obama actually earned a nomination, he selected Biden as his vice presidential running mate. And the two went on to win the general election, as everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Biden draws some strong support among African Americans here in South Carolina. And according to some polls, he leads here in South Carolina with about a couple of weeks to go before South Carolina's cast votes in the first in the South Democratic presidential primary. Charles Doe decided to take a second look at who she would support. You said this quote, I thought I was okay with Biden, but it seems like he's out of step. How out of step is Biden with South Carolina right now in your mind? Well, right now in my mind, when he said that um, he considered us as a firewall or a people, this firewall of people can still make decisions for themselves and don't need you to tell them how to make the decisions. And maybe if you have, would reach out to them, they might support you. But because you haven't reached out to them, that, I don't believe it's going to be there. I don't believe it's going to be there. That's my personal opinion. And I know that obviously while assisting with the voter registration drive at the bureau complex, you said, in quote, in other words, he's not where he needs to be or what the people want. Where does Tom Stein need to be right now with the people of South Carolina? Well, one thing about Tom Stein, that's what I like about him. He's people-oriented. Okay. Look, he go find his fault. You ain't got to come look for him or you look up near he is. And I mean, he's been in a small place, a large place. Okay. That's where he's been. And then this man has done things for the last 10 to 15 years that the average person with much money would not do. This man has gone on to help poor children in the poor schools where they were eating from McDonald's and Hardy's and all those places. These children are now eating healthy food because he has connected with the farmers in the school and now the children are eating better. Also, there were people all over where he's been that people, certain people could not get loans from the bank. He's made that possible. He has a bank that is just geared to those people that cannot or will not, the bank will not loan them money. But this bank will. Okay. And if they don't, then they have to answer to the board. Mm. Okay. And that makes him a different kind of person. Also, uh, Tom Sider, he was worried about the voting rights for everyone. He feels that people should be should have the right to vote and then not have their votes suppressed. Like you got all these people that trying to keep you from voting or uh, voting where they want you to vote and those kind of things. He also feels that there should be a minimum wage for everyone, at least fifteen dollars an hour. Just so people can be able to take care of their families. So many people working two or three jobs now. That's not fair. He also feels that there should be more jobs in South Carolina for people where they can do what they need to do for their families. Well, and good health care. Okay. And, and, then, and then once they have the health care, have an option of the kind of health care that they want. What options are ideal in your mind? Uh, the options are that no matter what problem or illness that that person has, he ought to be able to be treated regardless. Some insurance will drop you off if you got certain illness. And if you got an option, then you can pick and choose what insurance you'd like to have. Okay. I'm glad you do. Right now, you don't have that option. Matter of fact, most people don't have any option at all because most people don't have health care at all. And everybody needs some form of health care. And what exactly should people expect more from when it comes to Tom Steyer? Well, they should they should expect him to do more better than what we got up there now. Because what we got up there now, they can buy the dog catcher. Or the catcher or the dog, it don't matter. Because what we have there now is not going to benefit us. Poor people, people of color, and people that have nothing. They're not going to benefit from what we have now. I know that there are people that think, oh, he's done such a great job. No, 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 no. You're going to be shocked to find out what we really have with that man up there, which is zero. I know that you also told the Greenwood Index uh, this too. After I saw several debates that had me where I needed to, to look again, let me ask you this. When you look back at those several debates to right now, how do you think South Carolina view Tom Steyer right now? I think they view him as a real person. 
Okay. Because Tom Sardar can look you square in the face, in the eyes, not bad in his eyes. And most people, when they're not telling the truth, they can't look you in the face. They look you everywhere except in the face, all over you, all around you. But this man look you square in the face. And that's trustworthiness to me, that he can do that. And I know, obviously, some people are sitting here saying right now, why did you look to Tom Stein versus, say, maybe Elizabeth Warren, who's more connected to President Obama? Well, they might be more connected, but we have to think about what she has out there, too. Now, you want everybody to have health care, but how are you going to pay for it? All right. Here, Tom Stein is saying, I feel everybody needs to have health care with an option. Because if we listen to Elizabeth Warren, the people that have health care now, they're not going to have it when she gets finished. No. You will not have it. And they will take away what you do have and give you something else. Why take away what you have if you like it? Now, if you don't like it, that's different. But if you have something that you like, then let those folks keep it. And also, ooh, let me ask this too. What else do people want from Tom Steyer right now, Ms. Eda? All they want from Tom Steyer is for him to be a real person. And one thing he, this man does, he puts his money where his mouth is. He helps people, not just some people, all kinds of people. And folk that have money, they take that money in their pocket and go on their cruises and go live in their yachts and go wherever. But here this man is, want to put money into the poor community, which is our community. That says a lot about him. Even with President Obama, he did much of the things that Tom Steyer is doing, and that's why I feel comfortable with him. Where should he put his money if he becomes president, in particular areas of South Carolina? Well, I need to put it in our schools. Because in many of our rural areas, their schools are below standard. Pay the teachers. Then make sure that the buildings are up to par. And I mean, just everything, not everything, but those things that we need. And then help us that we can help ourselves. Because if you put money in, in, into jobs, and then with him, he believed in climate change. And then at that rate, that means we got to change stuff all together. Well, we have pollu pollution all over the place now. Okay. And that means now we got to change to a different kind of setup where we do our green stuff where everybody can be a little bit healthier. Right now, the stuff we're getting is going to kill us. If we are not already dead, we're going to die soon if we don't do something about it. That makes a difference. And this may want to change the mindset and the situation that people are in and try to help them help themselves. And I know recently you said this quote, we needed some hope, meaning back in 2008. We needed something different to beat Trump. And that's, that, that's what you said recently. Tom Stein can bring it, you said. What, do you, what else does Tom Stein need besides just that? Hope. Well... Tom Steyer needs to continue to be a real person that you can relate to, okay. that I can relate to. I can go up to him and talk to him about a situation, and then he can see if he has somebody in this area that can help me or could send someone in this area to help me straighten this situation out. Because right now, there's nobody you can talk to. Because you've got a president who can just do what he want to do, and it's all right. And you know when you do what you want to do, when you look at people who don't look like you, you want to do as less as I possibly can. And that's the game plan for him. But in this man, I see him being a totally different pe person because with him having gone out, gave up a job out in the United States, dealing with people and communities, he sees for a fact that blacks are treated differently. People of color are treated differently than other folk. How do you hope a Tom Steyer will change that as far as improving relationships in the African-American community? I think 
once he, once people feel comfortable with him, that he is an upright person, then they're going to be more open to talk with him about whatever the situation is. For instance, me as an elected official, I could go to Tom Stein and I could say, uh, President Stein, look, this is what we need in Greenwood. Is it possible that you can help us with housing, better housing in Greenwood, and where people can live in a house without living in a home? There's a difference. Living in a house is something that's comfortable. Living in a house may be just anything, but maybe you can put a bed. And, and with just being able to relate to somebody, it makes all the difference. And I know the, the newspaper said this too, quote, to some the endorsement might seem odd. On the surface, it might seem the style didn't doesn't check off some of the same category, categories, that is, as Charles does in her public life. What do you see in style now that you saw in former President Obama 12 years ago? Well, they're just kind of on the same page because they want people to be able to do better with their life. And President Obama had the experience of dealing with those folk that didn't like him because he was who he was. Want to make like he was from someplace else when he was born in the United States. And he had to deal with a lot of stuff that we're dealing with. And with Steiner, having been out there in the community and hearing all this stuff, and then dealing with folk that dealing with him because he's dealing with us, can you imagine what that must be like? Can you imagine? I can't. Been there, done that. So for this man, to want to bring everybody together. And he's saying, not just one or two people, but together we can win this election. And together we can make a difference in everyone's life. You also said this quote, he's a different kind of guy, meaning obviously Tom Steyer. You also said this quote, he is a guy who has much, but he's here, out there, helping people he doesn't even know. For instance, as you mentioned, those schools in those rural areas where the children were just eating fast food, he felt those children needed to have healthy food. So he worked with those schools and those farms and got them together. And now those children are eating healthy food. What is the state of nutrition here in South Carolina? It's better now because of Michelle Obama. Remember, Michelle started with the garden right. at the White House, at the People House, okay. not the White House, at okay. the People House. And then she began to go talk to the FDA people about our children needing to eat healthy food. Of course, there was mamas and grandmamas and aunties that didn't like that. And then some of the food that she had initiated for the schools, of course, they didn't like it, so they went back to their old eating habits. But there are still children out there right now that are eating the healthy food that she implemented, that she presented to the United States. Let me fast forward to, obviously, primary night. Fired up, ready to go. What will you say at 7 p.m. on primary night? This primary night? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm just going to say thank you, Lord, because I knew you would do it. Just that simple. That's all I can say. See. That's what I said for President Obama. Okay. I was, we were coming out of, um, we had gone to up in Greenville, I believe, and we were coming back home. Okay. And we uh, heard on the news that he had won the primary. I said, Lord, I thank you. And we came on home because I knew the Lord would work things out like he's going to work things out for Tom Stein. I just believe it because those of that at the bottom will rise to the top. And those at the top will go to the bottom because the shoes I'm talking to you. Let me talk about those polls. Obviously, Tom Stein is right now, I believe, in second place here in South Carolina. How will he rise to the top with you? We already had to talk to me because I, I chose to support him. So with me, he's already at the top. So now what I got to do these next few weeks, knock on doors, get on my phone, and do what I need to do, whether it be uh, ride people to the poll or whatever. But they they have to be voting for my person to do that. So you can't get a ride in my car and tell me you're going to do something else. 
So. <laughs> So anyway, I'll, I'll get those ride to the pole and do what I need to do. Yeah. But the main thing, I'd be out knocking on doors and, and putting uh, door knockers on there, reminding them to go to the pole on the 29th to buck. What do you hope to get out of all of this, Ms. Eden? What I hope to get out of? Nothing. The only thing I want is that for us to have a person that's a real person that can represent the United States and I have to be embarrassed. I sit there and I look at the president now and sometimes I get in tears because I'm so embarrassed because he's so ignorant. How do you just call me a black monkey because I'm darker than him? How do you call me a name that's not Eden because that's the name he chose to call me? He's embarrassing that to everybody that don't look like him. And to everybody that don't have what we think he got. I don't think he got anything. But you might think he has a whole lot. I don't know. But I don't believe he got anything. Okay. The Honorable Edith Charles, thank you so much for your time. Again, welcome to Quentin's Full Sucks.